Hello again and welcome to another Show Me. In this one we're going to be talking about something called the pharynx and I'm sure you've all heard of it. In particular we're going to be defining what it does and then we're going to be really thinking about the muscles and in particular two groups of muscles, some cylindrical muscles which form the constrictor group and can be seen externally and then inside the pharynx there's some longitudinal muscles as well. First of all what is the pharynx? Well the pharynx is a fibromuscular tube and it is located posterior to the nasal and oral cavities and also posterior to the larynx as well so we have a nasopharynx, we have an oropharynx and a laryngopharynx. The pharyngeal cavity of course is a common pathway for air and food so now that we've established that, we are going to draw, uh, we're going to draw on a diagram here. And those of you who've seen my diagrams before already know that you're going to be disappointed. So we're going to draw in a structure like that. And this is hopefully will make sense in a moment if it doesn't yet. And this is a posterior view through the skull in here, and we can draw in. structure in there and this is uh, really at the base of the skull around foramen magnum and I can draw a styloid process coming off the back there and I can then begin to draw on some of our muscles but before I do that I'm just going to mark an attachment here to the skull just for so you know where we're talking this is something known as the pharyngeal tubercle and you may remember that I've pointed this out on a skull before, pharyngeal, pharyngeal tubercle. It's just anterior to foramen magnum. And there's an important attachment site for what we call the superior constrictor. So we can begin to draw that on. And we're forming a kind of tube-like shape here. So it kind of comes up in this fashion and comes down like this. And we can draw a middle section on because the fibres sort of travel in this direction. And this midline tenderness strip is uh, often referred to as the pharyngeal raphe. And I remember talking about what a raphe is. It's where two muscles on either side often join on a tenderness strip and that often seals in some strength for, for, for muscles and, and some integrity to the, to the overall structure that it's trying to create. In this example, it's creating a tube and so our superior constrictor is in here and we can label that as our superior constrictor, so SC. And this interdigitates really with some fibres below which kind of come up in this kind of fashion, like this. And it bulges out here slightly because in this region in here, I'm just going to draw that in blue on either side so you know where we are anatomically, this is actually the hyoid bone and the middle constrictor, which is in here, is going to take a similar shape and direction of fibres to that of the superior constrictor, but it's going to be attached slightly differently. We'll talk about the attachments in a moment. And then below that, we have fibres coming up below from the inferior constrictor so we can draw that on as well so this is the inferior constrictor so let's just summarize the attachments of this external group that forms this fibromuscular tube we've got our superior constrictor up here and the superior constrictor attaches to the pharyngeal tubercle which I've mentioned but anteriorly it attaches to an, another raphe uh, which is known as the pterygomandibular raphe, so as well as attaching to the pharyngeal raphe, which is here, it attaches to something known as the pterygomandibular raphe, and this is attached to the pterygoid hamulus, and this is where it moves round anteriorly to hang off the back of that cheek muscle, which is the buccinator muscle. So we have the buccinator in the cheek, then we have this raphe stretching down from the pterygoid hamulus, and hanging off the back of that we have the joining of the superior constrictor that travels around in a tube and joins one on each side and eventually attaches to the 
pharyngeal tubercle and filling in the gap at the top we actually have some connective tissue in here we have some fascia at the top there and that's known as the pharyngeal pharyngeal oops pharyngeal fascia do it the other way around so that's in there so that's our superior constrictor. Our middle constrictor, as we've seen, has a relationship with the hyoid bones, which attaches to that. And it also attaches to um, something known as the stylohyoid ligament, which actually comes down and will draw on the stylohyoid ligament and uh, a muscle that comes from the styloid process in a moment. So this is the styloid process. And going down to our inferior constrictor, the inferior constrictor attaches to the cricoid cartilage and to the thyroid cartilage as well, and the ligament that uh, spans these uh, and, and that crosses the, the cricothyroid muscle. So these are our constrictor muscles. They're stacked into together and they interdigitate, and they all have the joint function of constriction of the pharynx and the innovation is vagus nerve technically I guess the innovation is through the cranial accessory through what we call the pharyngeal plexus and the pharyngeal plexus is either glossopharyngeal vagus cranial accessory contribution to vagus or sympathetics so that summarizes the kind of view that you might get posteriorly without any kind of dissection of that tube to see the longitudinal muscles, we really have to dissect into this, although there is one particular longitudinal muscle that we can see that extends from the styloid process over here that does come down and pierce into uh, the constrictor group. And this particular muscle which comes down will come down in this kind of direction in here. Colour it in on each side so we can see exactly where it's going. So there'll be one on each side coming in here. And this is the one muscle belonging to the longitudinal group which we can see without dissecting through the walls of the constrictor muscle group. And this muscle is what's known as stylopharyngeus. pharyngeus. So how do we see the others? Well in order to see the others we have to kind of dissect through here and opening it out posteriorly and for that we're actually going to move on to uh, another image. Before I do that though I'm just going to finally say that stylopharyngeus is innervated by the glossopharyngeal nerve which is cranial nerve 9 and it's actually the only muscle innervated by the glossopharyngeal nerve so it's worth pointing that out as well so we've got the complete innovation before we move